Hello everyone, my name is Brittany. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm reading some YA fantasy. It's Brittany, bitch. So I will be reading two books for this, but I wanted to talk to you about the first one. The first one I'm reading is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. And this book is on my 22 TBR. I really wanted to get to it. And it is basically a YA fantasy horror. So it has a lot of horror elements, even though it is a fantasy. And it does include a lot of magical realism. As you can see, I've already started it. I'm actually 75% of the way in. That is a surprise. I ended up starting it this morning and I actually have the audiobook for this. So I listened to it most of the day at work and got 75% of the way into this bad boy. This book is under 300 pages, but you wouldn't know that because it feels like a very, very long book. In this novel, we are following Iris and she has two sisters and her and her sisters went missing a really long time ago whenever they were really young and it was like a big like child kidnapping case and they came back and their hair turned white and their blue eyes are now black and they're just a little bit different. This sounds like a really intriguing concept off the cuff and that's why I wanted to pick it up but honestly this book so far is a lot more vapid than I was expecting. Most of this book, I would say 90% of it, is descriptions about things that are disgusting or rotten like bugs and beetles and ants and rotten wood and rotting flesh flowers and all of these different things that are constantly described as like rot and rust and wood. Like I'm not even kidding how many times I've heard that phrase. It's ridiculous. So anyway, Iris's sister Grey goes missing. So her and her sister Vivi go to try to find Grey. Then they go on this little adventure to try to find her sister. Her sister Grey is a supermodel and her sister Vivi is like a famous singer or whatever. I don't fucking know. That doesn't make any sense. But anyway, I feel like this book is vapid not just because there's a lot of supermodels in this. I just feel like this isn't really going anywhere. As a plot, I have no idea what the fuck is happening. Obviously, like there's something weird going on with the girls. They're still trying to figure out like what happened to them a really long time ago. And her sister Gray keeps saying that she like knows what happened, but she refuses to tell anybody. But the other two sisters have no idea. So trying to like piece together like what's actually happening. And at the same time, they're being chased by literally like a minotaur. And I really don't understand like what's the point of this book so far. <laughs> it sounds like something I'd really enjoy. And that's why I picked it up and I was really excited for it. And also this cover is a lie because this looks amazing, but I'm really, not feeling it. To be quite honest, I'm pretty upset with it so far. I'm 75% of the way and I'm hoping it has a really good weird ending, but so far I'm incredibly bored. It is incredibly YA too. It just feels really young. Like I know our main character is young, but for some reason it just feels young. It feels a little juvenile for my taste. So honestly, I have no idea what I'd rate it so far, but I haven't really been enjoying it. I think the only reason I've been able to read so much of it obviously is because it's been on audio. I've been very focused on finishing it because I'm very motivated to read at the moment, but I just don't really don't have you about this. Please let me know your opinions down below. And I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this up, hopefully tonight or tomorrow, because I just kind of want to get it over with. And then we'll move on to the other book that's in this video. So good morning, it is Saturday and it's around nine-ish now. I've been up since like 7 30 officially but my neighbors were really loud this morning because they like to go to the gym and they wake up at 3 30 and then it wakes my cat up so I've been up technically since 3 30 but on and off so I won't gonna count it so I actually finished House of Hollow this morning while I was getting ready on audio and honestly I don't really like it that much but we'll talk about it in a second at the moment, I'm getting Dunkin' Donuts, which I usually never do because it's very out of my way for my morning routine on Saturdays. And I just wanted to pay homage to Katie Colson, who always goes to Dunkin' Donuts. Like it's her favorite thing in the whole world. And I just feel like sometimes it disappoints me. So we're gonna see um, how it goes today. It's always a pretty long line and they just take forever. So anyways, this is for you, Katie Colson. I hope it's delicious. I'm getting a hazelnut iced latte. I think she gets hers with oat milk sometimes too, but I really decided I don't like oat milk, like the aftertaste, so that's not gonna happen. But anywho's, once I get my coffee and I go shopping, I'm gonna go to the library and drop off a few books and I'm gonna drop off House of Hollow. And then I will give you a chat about how I feel about the book. But right now it's not looking great, honestly. It just wasn't the book I was expecting. Like that's all I can really say at the moment. It just really wasn't the book I was expecting. I was expecting something very different and I can't really explain what that was, but it was definitely just not this. 
Okay, so I'm here at the library and I have to say they actually did a pretty good job this morning. I think it's good. I think the problem with Dunkin' is that I don't like the aftertaste of any of their flavors. Like, especially the hazelnut and the butter pecan, I feel like have a very distinct aftertaste, which I don't really enjoy. But they did a great job and they were a lot faster today. So I'll take that. So for my opinion on House of Hollow, I think this is probably going to get a good two stars out of me. I'm really disappointed because especially Katie Colson, she said this, she run this up to like five stars and said it was reminiscent of Bunny, which is one of her favorite books. And I was expecting a bunny feel, but this just did not feel like that at all. Honestly, I was just not invested. I think that's the biggest problem. I was not invested. I wasn't really caring about why the girls looked different and acted different. But also, I feel like it's very obvious. It's like incredibly obvious, like from the very beginning, because of the repetitive words they use, like rotting and wood and mulch and blood. And it talks about basically things rotting like continuously like it's almost so repetitive that it was like it was fucking annoying like actually I'm not gonna lie it was annoying like that was my biggest pet peeves this book just felt so much longer than it should have it's not even a full 300 pages and this book just felt like an eternity to finish and it's just so deceiving because this cover is just fucking beautiful but honestly this book was just such a snooze and it was just it was vapid in the way that like there was nothing like really deep about it and I feel like for the reveal at the end it was just so predictable based off of how many things were repeated in like the book like it wasn't really a surprise I mean at least I liked the explanation it makes sense but it wasn't a surprise it wasn't a bunny feel but you know I will give it it does have like dark disturbing vibes and I think it purposely just keeps trying to gross you out but I don't really know if that's like the best way this book should have gone I feel like it never actually unsettled me or made me feel horrified I just felt like they were purposefully dropping like gross shit on purpose to gross you out and this book to me is all vibe and no substance I think that's why I don't like it it has such a brilliant idea I love the idea and that's why I thought I was really gonna love this book but the substance part of it was severely lacking I didn't care for any of the characters. The only person of color was killed off. I'm just like really annoyed with it. There was also a lot of like sexual assault talk in here. So the girls basically sexually assault people. Like they kiss them and like put their finger in their mouth to like manipulate them. And it was just really weird and sexual. But yet like they'll talk about like how like shame on men for doing that to other people. I don't know. It was just really, ugh. it didn't sit well with me. It doesn't sit well with me. It makes me feel ugh, and not for the reasons it's wanting. It just didn't, it didn't work at all for me that's all I can really say about it go check out my review which I hope will be a little more comprehensive but honestly I'm severely disappointed so far in this reading vlog so next up for today uh, my brother and I will be going to see House of Gucci which I'm surprised it's still showing but we're going to one of those movie theaters that's like a luxury one where you can like eat so we're gonna do that for lunchtime and I didn't realize the movie was almost three hours fucking long and last night he told me and I was like oh because it kind of sucks that like I would spend three hours my entire Saturday watching a movie which sounds selfish but whenever you work as long of hours as I do at a job that you're just suffering at spending three hours of your weekend it just sounds like such a long time and technically we'll be there for like almost four hours because we have to get there early to like order the food so anyway that's the plan for today and then um I'll start Daughter of the Moon Goddess eventually I don't really know I'm going to finish it yet because I have a lot of library books to finish at the moment like since it's an arc I don't have to review it for a few months so I'm going to kind of wait on it for a few weeks and then I'll get back to you but House of Hollow I'm just so disappointed I've read so many like two-star books in the last couple weeks so anyway uh that's what we're gonna do and then I will fill you in a little bit later when I decide to start Daughter of the Moon Goddess
So I am 60% of the way into Daughter of the Moon Goddess and it has taken me five fucking days to get there, which may not seem like a long time for a lot of you, but for me, that is a very long time. This book is only 512 pages. I've definitely read those length of books in like two to three days. So the fact that it took me five days to get 60% is ridiculous. And I actually devoted an hour of time every single one of those nights to this book. I just feel like this book is really reading very slow. But anyway, actually no, I don't think I feel as we honest that I'm using this book to fulfill one of my prompts from the Magical Readathon in 2021. There was like three different prompts you're supposed to do to like create your character. Um, and this is the one where I had to have moon or stars in the title or on the cover. So that's what this one is satisfying. If you've seen the animated film Over the Moon, you probably are familiar with the Moon Goddess storyline, which is like Chinese folklore. And I think it's a really interesting storyline, which is exactly why I wanted to read this book. Um, but I feel like we've been like way away from that plot for like a very long time. So basically we're following our main character who's the daughter to the moon goddess. We find out the moon goddess is imprisoned on the moon because her lover shot down like the firebirds and as like a reward he was given like this potion of longevity so he could become an immortal, right? It's like an elixir of immortality or something. And instead he gives it to his pregnant lover, which is the moon goddess. So she turns into the moon goddess and she's literally imprisoned there on the moon because she like took the elixir instead of him. Long story short, the empress from like the celestial kingdom, she comes in and she's like, hey, you know, we sent some weird magic in the area, what's going on? So then the moon goddess has to send off her only daughter to, you know, to get away from the palace and to get away from the moon. So our main character goes on a journey and her whole thing is to like free her mom eventually, but like we are not there. We are literally everywhere but trying to free her mom. I just feel like we really lost sight of that initial plot. And it has been brought up a couple of times where she was like, oh, well, a few years past and I kind of forgot like my journey and what I'm trying to go for. But this book is just like incredibly slow and I feel like nothing's really happened for 60% of it. Like I can definitely tell you a couple of things, but you know what it is? There's no stakes in this book. Like I feel nothing for the characters and there's no stakes, which in my opinion is something you really need for like a fantasy novel. Like I need to feel stakes for these characters, especially because this is supposed to be a duology. So this is the first book in a duology. I didn't know that when I requested it from Neck Alley, by the way, because otherwise I definitely would not have because I really am trying not to request series because I hate starting things and then I may not want to finish them. There's kind of like a love triangle going on, which is something I enjoy, but otherwise, like I'm just having kind of a hard time with the book. Like I don't feel like it's difficult to read, but it's not very fast and there's not a whole lot happening and I'm just not connected to anything. I just feel like someone is telling me this story over like, like a campfire and that's great and all, and it does feel like its own folklore tale, but I don't really feel like invested in the story. I just feel like this happened a long time ago and I'm reading about like a folklore that happened a long time ago. So like, I don't feel invested that's happening right now, if that makes any sense. And I'm actually gonna take a break with this for a few days because I'm just having a really hard time with it. There's a couple other books I need to read. I'm just gonna probably take like three, four days off from this and come back to it fresh and try to finish it. And then I'll get back to you guys, but I'm just having a really hard time with it. Like it's not bad by any means, but when you're not connected to the story and you're not invested in the story and you don't really care what happens to the characters, especially as it's like a big quest, I just, I don't care. And I don't really like care to finish it. Like if I didn't finish this book, it wouldn't destroy me. I wouldn't be like sitting up at night. Like I wonder what happened at the end. I like the magic system and stuff. I think a lot of it's really interesting, but a lot of it isn't really explained that well either. I just feel like some of the world building is kind of lacking or it's like info dumpy to the point where like she's over describing every person introduced by like what color robe they're wearing, like what pin is in their hair. And I just feel like I'm not actually getting to know the people at all. Anyway, when I finally get back to this, I will let you know and hopefully it'll be when I finish the book. So I ended up finishing Daughter of the Moon Goddess and I think that this is gonna be the second book in this video that's going to get two stars. I really, the more I sit with it, the more I'm forgetting. I just feel like this is kind of a forgettable story to be honest and it like started off really strong. We obviously have like the folklore of the moon goddess and then we have this daughter who's escaping and trying to save her and like get her off the moon because she's imprisoned there. Great premise. And then it completely disappears throughout the entire story until like the very end. And I just feel like this book just did not do it for me. It didn't work at all. And honestly, I have no idea why they're making a sequel. Like I, this really does not need a sequel in any way, shape or form. And I have no idea what they're gonna do with that. Also when I requested it, it did not have a sequel. So 
not my fault. But you know, for a book that's over 500 pages, you think that you get to know the characters a little bit. And I know nothing about any of these characters. I just feel like they're very one-dimensional and the whole story was like a bit airless. There wasn't really a whole lot of life to anything. It felt like I was being like told this story by a campfire, but it wasn't even like with emotion. It was like monotone, like a monotone campfire story. I don't know any of the characters. I don't know what their thoughts and feelings are. Like that's how I felt the entire time I was reading this. And it's just still very confusing for a book of this length. There really needs to be depth, especially in a book of this length. There needs to be depth to connect me to the story. But honestly, I feel like the whole part that I didn't like about this book, especially was the writing style, which is the entire book. I just feel like everything was telling me what they were feeling or doing instead of showing me. And I really have realized I don't like that, especially in these type of stories where I need to emotionally connect. If this is like a very plot driven story, like I don't mind that sometimes, but especially in this instance, like I really need to like know what they're feeling and feel the stakes in this because I felt nothing throughout this entire novel. I only felt like very early on in the beginning. And then after that, it was like all of my like sensors were just numb. And that's just not what you want from a book. I also did not care for our main character whatsoever. I didn't really care for the love triangle. I just feel like it just I don't know. Nothing worked about this for me, honestly. I'm giving it two stars just because I love the premise. It has a beautiful cover and I don't want to discourage this author from writing in the future because this was her debut novel and I'm not saying it was like terrible. I really just don't like her writing style and I know a lot of other people love this book. It could just be the writing style for me. It just didn't work. It didn't connect me to anything. I didn't care. I just felt like every fantasy trope ever was put into the story and then like not fleshed out. I don't know, like there's even dragons and stuff in here, like stuff that I think is so cool, but it just was not done in a way that I enjoyed. It was almost like too little world building and then too much bro building to the fact where like every single thing was described on people but like I had no idea like how the kingdoms work or how the magic kind of worked. I don't know. I just, it's, it fell flat. It fell really flat for me. Sorry. I really thought that I was going to get a good four or five star out of this reading vlog, but that obviously did not happen. I actually was expecting pretty high marks for both of these books and they just didn't work for me. And maybe they'll work for you. I just wanted to give them a shot. And obviously I used the Daughter Moon Goddess as one of my prompts for the Magical Readathon to create my character. But I don't know. Honestly, this reading vlog is probably one of the most disappointing I've had like in a while because both of them were just like not great. So anywho, if you have any suggestions for some really good fantasy, let me know, especially why a fantasy, which by the way, God of the Moon Goddess is 100% YA. If you're looking for the adult feeling that I was actually like kind of looking for, um, it's not that. It is very YA feeling. So if you don't like YA, I probably wouldn't go into it with those expectations because I definitely thought it was kind of more of a YA adult crossover, which is kind of how people marketed, but it is not uh, that. Anywho, I will talk to you guys all later. Thank you so much for being here and I'll talk to you guys eventually. Bye!